Hi guys, welcome back to my series where I'm working through the challenges in my book, The C-Sharp Player's Guide. Um, we, last time we finished the base game and now we're down to the expansion. So I just, a reminder, um, there are two options. Let me scroll up here a little bit. There are two pathways that you can take. You do not need to do all these challenges. You need to do the core path, in which case you do the core mechanics and then there and then you do two of the expansions which now so we're done with all the core ones on these videos and we are going to do the expansions um, or you can go start with the code that i have on the website for the the the, the core path and you just start from there and just do uh, it's seven of the expansions instead and either of those approaches are totally fine i the, the intent isn't to do all 18 of these challenges that is a lot of work and you really don't need to do all that to get the learning that i think you really need you know the the, the, the desired learning from this i do see a lot of people who make the choice to just do all of them and that's totally fine too if that's what you want to do um i do tend to recommend just doing the expansion path if you're still pretty uncomfortable with object-oriented design because it allows you to like go start with somebody else's code my code that um, that has some structure to it already and that it's easy to just look at and just um, start to expand upon. Now, I will say that, like, I'm doing these videos and I'm not, I'm, I haven't made any particular effort to try and align what we've ended up with here with the solution on the website. So there's a chance I might come up with some way to take what I've got right now as, as the current, like, core path that's the video-based core path so if you've been kind of following the videos and you want to just start with a core path, then you you could start you could use that as an alternative starting point um, to do the expansion path. Um, so I should probably now that I'm thinking of it, I should probably go make a make a copy of where I'm at right this second and uh, uh, have that there available for people. So hang on one second while I go do that. Okay, I'm back. I made, I, I took, I made a zip copy of everything so that I can take that as a snapshot and upload it to the website. So anyway, if you're going down the expansion path that you can start with the version that's on there already, or you can use the video, the version that we've made through these videos, but today we're just going to keep going on and we're just going to move down through these expansions. Um, this one shouldn't be crazy difficult. We're going to make some sort of display of the game status. I think I'm going to try and stick pretty close to this, but I've seen some actually super cool um, other alternative displays, including somebody who had gone to great efforts to make like a like a console window that was like they had like drawn out like boxes and like like they looked like little cards and they was like you can like click on stuff and interact with it and they had done all sorts of fancy stuff to make that happen it was super impressive so i've seen some really cool things come out of this we're going to keep it fairly basic and and basically just stick with this and and there's one thing that you don't see in here and that is um distinguish it from with you know, distinguish the current character's turn um from the others and I, I just made a, the way this is written, uh, yellow versus white. So I think we're just going to go with something like this and we're going to have to do a little bit of formatting. I'm going to have to remember some of that stuff because I don't do it too often, but, um, yeah, so that's the basic idea is, is something like this where we're going to display their health and then, and then the rest of it's about the same. Um, and we'll just go from there. So I'm going to scoot this out of the way. I'll still be able to see it, but you guys won't. Um, really though, I feel like, uh, it's, it's, let's see, it's this part right here that says it's this person's turn. So what I think I want to do is essentially it's going to go like right here. So we're going to say, um, display state. For the moment, we'll just make another method that does this. And I think the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do console clear. So I just got to make this method. And let's do this. I'm going to just copy and paste. Huh. 
copied and pasted it, but it lost a whole lot of stuff there. This is something like that. And then I've got something like this. I don't know what this little weird dash is doing here. I don't know where that came from. Oh, okay, maybe I do. No, I don't. That's correct right there. I don't know what's going on with that, but I'm just, I'm just, so I'm just kind of building out the skeleton, no pun intended. This was all the way on the right side. I'm just going to duplicate that line with control D. Um, yeah, so console dot right line, all of that. Let's do this the fast way. I'm going to hold down control alt and arrow keys and get all the lines. Console dot right line. And then I can actually remove these pluses. I don't need those. Just close out the. <laughs> I kind of hate how <laughs> the wrapping, it's like one character off. And so it's just got to like. <laughs> it's wrapping just the tiniest little bit. There. So much better. Okay, uh, there we go. All right, so um, so that's the basic idea. And now I can run this and it'll just display that on all of them. That's a reasonable start. Uh, other than this is a lie because it's just hard coded. So even after I do, you know, that... Oh, interesting. The um, the fact that I'm clearing the screen means that I lose track of what was happening. Maybe I'll, you know what? Maybe I'll get rid of that. I don't know if you saw that, but like, like the skeleton attack, they did something and displayed something, and then it was gone. And I don't love that. So now it's all still there, um, including, let me start this over again and do this. So now I can see, you know, both. Yeah, anyway, like I said, we, we can see that it's a lie. Because uh, even though, you know, TOG is now at 18, it still says 25. That is okay. Um, what we know we need to do here is um, we need to just, instead of doing this, we need to do something like console dot, right? Well, something like for each character hero in heroes dot characters, console dot right line, and then something like hero dot name. And then some spaces, and then hero dot current HP, hero dot max HP. And now we can, well, we can, yeah, so we can delete that, but like, okay, so <laughs> this, this gets us kind of the bare minimum and um, uh, missing a, a, a right paren, so I should add that in. But um, like the, the the formatting here is not 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 what we really want it to be. So what I think I'm gonna do here is, oh, let's see what else. So a couple of things. One of them is it it left space in here for. Let me bring this back. It left space in here for up to three characters. 
right? Um, and that way we can have, if something has that many, it's it, like, it doesn't like mess with the layout. So like the main thing we need to deal with right there is really, um, not the, I, I want to shrink that a little bit so I can actually see it, but um, not too far. Yeah, so what we need here is some formatting and I am going to, no, I don't remember it. So I'm going to look it up in my own book. And this should be, there's a section in. It should be level eight. There's a section about formatting and alignment. And let's see. So I've got this here now and I'm going to. So this says, if you want to do. Um, so if it's less than zero, then it adds white space to the front. So if we do negative three, wait, is it comma? Yeah, it's comma. And then here we do positive three. And now if we run that. I think I got it backwards. Just looking at the book and I think that's a, I think it's actually got, I think, I think the book actually has it backwards. Um, that might be a mistake in the book. The all oh, the examples show it correctly. Um, let's also get the closing print in there. I didn't need to restart that. It was it could hot, it could have hot reloaded it. So here, when this gets down low enough if it does i don't know if it will if it gets to single digits it should still keep the there yeah so still working like we would want um we do want like just looking at that like i th i think we actually want this to be over farther like let's see one two three four five six In the book, it actually does seven more characters. So, I mean, we could do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then we technically have it as long as they always enter a three digit name, a three, three, three digit, three character name. Um, however, I think what we could do is three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Three, seven. Um, if we do that, <laughs> just reserve 37 spots for it. Make that 38. Oh, it's over. Now I do need to restart it. So that's, that looks like the book has it. Um, yeah, so I, I get that should do it other than we want to do it over here as well. And, uh, and this is a uh, monsters and this is monster. I'm, it's 37 because I potentially put one blank space in there. So let's see what that does. Okay, so it is it is lined up right. It's just uh, I actually want that over here. So I could. 
you know, just add another, I don't know how many characters that is, but we can just try out some stuff here and see what it does. It's more than that. It's probably less than that. Oh, nope. Somehow I got lucky. That That's it right there. So now we're actually seeing what that is, and it's actually a lot more, it's a lot more interesting to watch that now than it has been. You can see the skeleton getting taken out. We got two skeletons. You can see how it's attacking the, the one. It's actually attacking both. It's going to be a close one. Nope. So I think, I think we, I think we're, I think we've actually done everything in this challenge with the one exception of you're supposed to somehow be able to tell who whose turn it actually is so and that and the the book suggested you could use either some sort of like marker like so we could do something like um we could do something like we could do something like uh switch that to a character instead of a string because it was sure because a string interpolation with strings doesn't really work very well uh seems like there is a way to make it work though i'm trying to remember how maybe it's that make it maybe that Yeah, I, I don't remember, and I don't know if there necessarily is a way to do it. I, I guess I can just use the character. And that would work. Other than we, we like what we want is... Um, okay, so we need to know who the... In order for this guy to the, to mark the, the active, the current player, um, this needs to... We need to pass that in here. This guy has no context about who, who the current character is because that's happening right in here. So we'll pass. We'll we'll make that a parameter. We'll pass in. Then we can do something like current equals hero. That otherwise empty. That's, that's packing in a whole lot of stuff into a, into a single line, and I don't love that. Like you can see that cycling through. We'd need to. Get rid of a couple of characters on that, and then get rid of a couple of characters on that, and then do something like that. And now, now we'll get the arrow on the on the right side and the arrow on the left side. And stop this and see it happening. Oh, 64. <laughs> um, that is doing. I'm not surprised. These are two characters and it is doing not string concatenation. Adding two characters gives you a number, so I'll bet the space character is 32. Is 
that's it's a signed number, I'll bet. Yeah, 32. Um anyway, like I said, I that's it's it is doing a whole lot of stuff in there and I actually think I'm going to forget all of that and do what the book says and I'm going to just say leave all this junk off leave all that junk off and then we'll just come in here and do um, our uber console as a method that is that gives us the color so I'd rather just do that console let's see Current equals monster. What doesn't it like about that? That. Uh, so if it's if it is the current one, then console color dot yellow. Otherwise, console color dot white. And then do the same thing up here so if it's the right one we're going to use a different color so we'll we'll mark it by color instead of symbol there so you do you do enough programming you 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 get you start to realize that uh, for people who are colorblind, like so at some point you'll run into that scenario of I got to deal with this, and I have to be thinking about people who have, you know, limitations and handicaps and things like that that are that they you want your software to work well for them as well. Um, usually differentiating things only by um, color is not sufficient because there's a lot of different flavors of colorblindness. And there may be people who aren't going to really be able to see the difference between this yellow and this white. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to, so, so it's fine to use color, but to just use color is usually not good enough. So to have the symbol that we were trying to squeeze in there is very reasonable. Um, there is this indication right here. It's Tog's turn. Like there's, there is a reason to think that maybe like maybe we don't need more because there are other other cues to pick up on. Uh, having that symbol in there would be would be kind of nice, but um, yeah, I, it's not strictly necessary. And and I, for right now, I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to stay with color. That's that's a fairly easy thing to get in there. Easier than trying to get that symbol in there. Though we definitely could have done that if we had wanted to. We were we were pretty close. If and I just I think the I think the thing that I would have done differently if I had wanted to keep pursuing that is I would have, instead of trying to squeeze that, like get the characters in there, I would have just put curly braces around this so that I have space. And then I just have made, I would have just built that do all the text that's being interpolated there. I would have just done, you know, something like something like string, um, hero, text equals um, hero text plus equals that that same thing current equals hero so if it's if it is then we do um, that otherwise we do two spaces um, and and trying to get strings embedded in a string interpolation um, that that just was that wasn't working just in a simple simple approach but if we do it this way and then we say hero text plus equals um, hero dot name well we can just do hero dot name and then right come down in here and do um, hero text and do that's probably still correct like the way we've got that set up, it actually is. Let's see if I scroll back up here. When it's Tog's turn, we actually do get that in there. So 
I think I think that's the, the real approach here is instead of trying to squish every single thing into um, that interpolated text, we just let's just make the string separate and that allows us to do more sophisticated logic like this. So that and then you could do the same thing down here. Uh, like I said, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to not not do that right now, but it, it wouldn't have been too hard. And I think we're done with this challenge. So uh, there's an argument to be made that we could have a whole separate class that's whole purpose is displaying this state. I don't think that would have been bad to have just said, we're just going to make like a, like a status renderer and, and have this, the battle know about it somehow, pass it in as a constructor parameter or something like that. And just say, Hey, battle renderer, like here's the current state, like draw this. That would have been, I think a pretty decent pathway as well. So, I don't feel too bad about sticking this in here. I, I I might have felt bad sticking console-y stuff in here if this was the only time this class touched the console, but this class is already pretty tightly tied to the console window. I actually wouldn't mind separating those, but I, I don't think I'm going to worry about that right now. We're, we're, the time that would matter is if you want to have a game like this that can run, but that isn't, but that it, that you want it to be able to run in a console window and also in like a graphical UI or in a web page or you know all sorts of things like that. So I think I think that I, I'll leave this just like that. And just have a separate method in here for it, and just stick that stick that responsibility on the battle class even though there are arguments for doing it otherwise. Another thing that's going on in here is it like you can resize this window. And it would be kind of cool if it were smart enough to like see the see like detect the size and like size things out accordingly. So like when you make that wider, this goes still goes all the way to the edge. Um, that would be a super cool little feature to add on. Um, but I'm, I'm going to not worry about that right now either. So I think, I think this is good enough for this challenge for now. So thanks for joining me and I will see you guys uh, soon.